It is my privilege this afternoon to have the opportunity to share my research and clinical strategies in the arrest and elimination of heart disease with the uh, Veggie Channel. My name is uh, Caldwell B. Esselstyn, Jr. I went to undergraduate university at Yale. I had my medical school at uh, Western Reserve University Medical School in Cleveland, Ohio. I had some of my residency training at the Cleveland Clinic in surgery, and also at St. George's Hospital in, in London, England. After uh, I finished my residency training. I was in the Army for one year at Fort Bragg and then one year as a combat surgeon in Vietnam. Then I came back to uh, Cleveland and was asked to join the staff of the Cleveland Clinic, where I eventually became chairman of our breast cancer task force and head of the section on thyroid and parathyroid surgery. I got very fascinated with uh, nutrition in 1985 and at that time began, in addition to my surgical duties, I began doing some research in the plant-based approach to cardiovascular disease. I was particularly interested in patients who were severely ill with heart disease. And I completed that study after about 12 years. And then since then have been, I retired from surgery but I have been asked back to the clinic, to the Wellness Institute, where I direct the cardiovascular disease prevention and reversal program. As chairman of our breast cancer task force, for no matter how many women I was doing breast surgery, I was doing absolutely nothing for the next unsuspecting victim. And that led to a bit of global research. And it was quite striking that there were the women, in, for instance, in Kenya, in Africa, had breast cancer was 30 and 40 times less frequent than in the United States. If you look at breast cancer in rural Japan in the 1950s, breast cancer was very infrequently identified. And yet as soon as the Japanese women would migrate to the United States, by the second and third generation, still pure Japanese American, they now had the same rate of breast cancer as their Caucasian counterpart. And perhaps even more striking was if you look at cancer of the prostate, in 1958, in the entire nation of Japan, how many autopsy proven deaths were there from cancer of the prostate? In the entire nation, 18, 18 by 1978. They were up to 137, which still pales in comparison to the 28,000 who will die in the United States this year. But along about that time, I just somehow felt that it would be more rewarding to look at the leading killer of women and men in Western civilization, which was heart disease. Because if we could get people to eat, to save themselves from heart disease, they would also, in all likelihood, markedly diminish the likelihood of having the common Western cancers of breast, prostate, colon, and pancreatic. Well, I think the fascination with the, the China study is that I first met Dr. Campbell in 1991. At that time, I was up the director and the program chairman of the first national conference on the elimination and prevention of coronary artery disease. And that was about the same time that he finished his China project. And I had heard about that and I was very anxious that he should be a member of the faculty of that uh, meeting on the uh, first national conference on the elimination and uh, prevention of heart disease. And he came and we met and it was very apparent that we both were coming at these common chronic killing diseases through the same pathway.
No, I think I'm one of th one of three. He uh, he was President Clinton gave us uh, some uh, credit for having read our book. He said that there were three physicians who uh, influenced his decision to become uh, plant-based in his nutrition. One was Dr. Dean Ornish, one was Dr. Ca Campbell and his son Tom Campbell, and Caldwell Esselstyn, myself. We were very grateful for that and we, we hope that he sticks with it and because we're sure it'll help him. The process with anybody who you'd like to have have the healthiest, the benefit of the healthiest diet on the planet, you have to somehow have time with the individual and give them the knowledge and the education. Because right now, increasingly we, what we recognize is that with every mouthful of typical Western food, that is America, European, and so forth, eating meat and dairy and oils, every time those foods pass your lips, you have an injury. Your body has an injury. Now it recovers probably from the injury by, by 90%. Then another injury, another recovery 90%. Finally, these little 10% build up and build up and build up. And as the injury increases, we as physicians give that a name. It maybe it will be hypertension or high blood pressure. Maybe the injury will be diabetes. Maybe the injury will be obesity. Maybe it will be heart disease. Maybe it will be stroke. Maybe it will be Alzheimer's or dementia. And these things don't suddenly jump up on you at, out of the blue for somebody who's perfectly healthy and then they get sick. You work hard through all those previous decades to establish the background of chronic illness. Chronic illness just doesn't happen when you're 70. You really injure and injure and injure and injure and injure yourself with this food until it finally manifests, uh, manifests itself as a disease. Well, what most uh, people will do for if they if they have anxiety, which is uh, overwhelming, for instance, with our heart patients, uh, I think the we don't have a specific program for them to, for med for meditation or relaxation. Although, if they are doing meditation, if they're doing relaxation, that's fine. We have. I have no problem with that. I think for the, it can be very powerful for some patients. What seems to help so much with the heart patients is when we spend the amount of time with them to give them all of the education, to give them the tools, give them the equipment, equipment so that they themselves can now become the locus of control or be empowered to stop this disease when they suddenly see themselves getting better. That is such a powerful tool for getting rid of their anxiety, for getting rid of their tension, when they realize that they themselves have the power to get rid of this illness. And on the other hand, there are other, other people who just have a great deal of anxiety just living today in Western civilization. There have, for those people, there's no question, I think, that things like meditation and relaxation can be helpful to them. But I think with the heart patients, it is so essential, it is so important that they understand that nothing, nothing can trump the importance of food. Food is more important than exercise. Food is more important than meditation, relaxation, because each of us has within us just so many behavior modification units. And though we encourage exercise, the thing that we will, that, uh, that I am very uh, intolerant about is I do not like to have patients deviate from the path to restore their health. And uh, if, they, if there are just too many things going on, 
sometimes patients can't do all that. They can't do the food, they can't do the relaxation and meditation, they can't do the exercise. I like to have, have them understand that the primary goal is, is the food and we love the exercise as a bonus and they're perfectly welcome if they want to use any relaxation technique, that's fine. To me is, is very uh, exciting is the fact that right now we are trying to provide people so that often in their middle years, when they're 45, 55, 65, you're asking them to change habits that they have had all their life, all their life. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get all the schools to have plant-based nutrition so that children would learn early on and establish the kinds of nutrition and food habits that would, they would never have to have these common chronic killing diseases. And this is a responsibility for the public and society and, the govern and those who are governing to allow this kind of knowledge and information and really a food program to find its way into the schools so that these children can be strong and healthy and have the kinds of habits that will allow them so that when they get to be more senior in their middle years, they don't have to come and see me with a chronic disease. Right now, there, there is so much resistance because of money. Think of the industries and all the in that we would have to overturn to make this happen. I mean, the cattle industry, the dairy industry, even the, the chicken, eggs, all these things which are so harmful. And that, well, pharmaceutical, they certainly aren't going to support this because they're enormous. And what about my own profession? How about the doctors who are doing stents and doing bypasses? Do they? Are they eager for fewer and fewer patients? In uh, July of this year, I was happy to be able to report, I wrote a paper on our research of uh, close to 200 patients who were seriously ill with cardiovascular disease. And uh, of that group, 89.3, almost 90%, agreed with our methods over, over close to four years of follow-up. Of those 177 out of 198, that's 89.3 percent. Over that period of time, 99.4 percent of those had no further cardiovascular events, no further heart attack, death, or stroke. And uh, that, as we look over the medical literature, that seems to about be a, as about as profound and beneficial a result as has been identified in patients with cardiovascular disease. So we're very anxious to have others join, join in and to repeat our experience and see if we really uh, can't begin to put ourselves out of business for heart disease. Thank you.